trains! Possibly the coolest technology I've ever gotten to ride inside of. Hello everyone, my name is Shannon. Welcome to the Snubs Report. Today I'm going to tell you all about how I arrived in Japan and my trip on a bullet train down to Kyoto. So, I went to Japan back in May for about two weeks. The first week was with my hubs, and then the second week was by myself because he had to go back to work, which sucked. But it was actually awesome because I'm a good traveler by myself, apparently. So we flew into Narita Airport, which is like, I don't know, an hour away from Tokyo or something like that. You guys, you guys, where in Japan? I made it through customs. It smelled funny, but we got through, and I got my ticket to go to Tokyo on the train. Yay! You can buy these uh, cool little train passes, which will get you straight into uh, Tokyo for like 20, 30 bucks each. So that would be around 3,000, 2,000 to 3,000 yen. We ended up taking this express train and there are signs everywhere in the airport basically directing you to where to find all the trains and where to buy tickets, which is great. Uh, so we ended up taking this train straight to the Tokyo station. It's in the middle of Tokyo. Luckily, it was pretty easy to grab our rolly suitcases and take them onto the train. But when we arrived to Tokyo station, it was very tough to get them out of the station. Uh, Tokyo station is like the biggest mall you have ever seen. There's shopping everywhere. Luckily, the signs are in Japanese as well as English. It's very, very easy to get lost because if you don't know which direction your hotel is in, you might miss the correct exit to get to your hotel. Um, but a lot of things are directed via north, south, east, and west. So as long as you know if you're supposed to go east, then you go east, then you should be good. Also, I did want to mention too, there are tons of people that just hang out in the train station, uh, basically directly tourists so if you look super confused if you're just like staring at a map I don't, I, don't, I don't know then they will most likely help you I took a day flight so it uh, left in the morning and then we flew to Japan and we got there around noon which was super weird it was like the longest day ever uh, since we arrived in Tokyo around noon we were able to check into our hotel once we got got out of the train station and I tried to stay up for the rest of the day which by the end of the day I was pretty much a zombie but by staying up for the rest of the day and then falling asleep when it got dark I was sad for the rest of the trip so pro tip you, sh you guys should do that hubs and i ended up staying in the marriott which was in the central part of tokyo it was very very close to the imperial palace and very close to the train station about three blocks or so uh, the Marriott was pretty nice overall. It was kind of pricey, probably because of where it was located, very close to Ginza as well, uh, which is a huge pricey shopping, shopping area. The beds were double beds, which was awkward. The rooms were teeny tiny, and they definitely had those toilets that talk to you. The toilets would also just kind of squirt water at you if you want them to. Yay, Japanese bidet! So once we checked into the Marriott, uh, we decided to go back to the train station and figure out how, uh, what to do for dinner and for lunch. And then we also tried to figure out how to buy Shinkansen or bullet train tickets. Luckily, people were very nice again and directed us to the right line to stand in to buy tickets from a specific machine. So Hubs and I ended up buying tickets for the Nozomi line for the very next day after staying in the Marriott overnight so that we could take a bullet train down to Kyoto in the morning and then we would have all day in Kyoto to just hang out and do whatever the heck we wanted. Even in English, the machines were a little bit confusing, but luckily there was a guy just hanging out next to the machine helping people buy tickets. So I just told him, uh, Nozomi, which is a specific line of the Shinkansen, down to Kyoto uh, tomorrow, and I told him in the morning, and then I told him which side I wanted to sit on the Shinkansen because I wanted to see Mount Fuji. So here's another pro tip for you guys. If you want to see Mount Fuji on your way down to Kyoto, you want to sit on the right side because Fuji will pass you on the right side. If you're going back up, up north to Tokyo, you want to sit on the left side so that you can see Fuji out on the left side. Luckily, it was so clear when we decided to take the train down to Kyoto, so it was beautiful and I was able to see Mount Fuji for like several minutes before it passed us by. So I know you're wondering about the actual train and how cool it was. The bullet train is freaking awesome. It is so clean, it is pristine, and it is so nice. Like the air smells good 
There's nothing on the floors. There's nothing in the seats. The seats are super cushy. They have little lay down uh, tabletops so you can you know, mess around on your laptop or you can eat or do whatever you need to do. There's free wireless that you can use while you're on the train. But of course, anybody that watches my hacker show knows you probably shouldn't use that. There's a lady that comes down the aisle and she will sell sandwiches, which was really cool because the uh, entire trip down to Kyoto was a couple of hours. So it's definitely worth maybe buying something to eat either on the train or right before you get on the train because there's tons of kiosks in the train station where you can buy like good sushi or gyoza or just like little bags of chips and candy and there's soda and water and green tea and everything you would want. Yes, everything you heard about vending machines is true however I did not see any with used panties and I'm really happy that I did not see any of those because that's kind of gross and I heard rumors and uh, yeah, just not go there. As far as how it felt when you're riding on a Shinkansen, it's actually a very, very smooth ride. So if you're sitting down in your seat, uh, there you just hear like a nice gradual wind going by you, but nothing really strong or nothing scary. It doesn't whistle or anything. It's not really loud and annoying. It's kind of a, a nice noise, so it kind of puts you to sleep. However, when another bullet train passes, because the tracks are kind of close, if one passes right by you and you're sitting on the left side, it's kind of scary if you're not expecting it because it does create a little air pocket between the two trains, so they go woof. <laughs> There are bathrooms and there are very, very small trash cans on the bullet train too. So if you have anything that you need to throw away, that's available. There are suitcase sections so you can put your suitcase away and you can lock it up, uh, which I didn't necessarily need to do because my suitcases were rather small. And the toilets again are super fancy so you don't have to like press any buttons or anything if you don't want to, it just flushes by itself. Uh, here's another pro tip for the train stations. If you want to go to a train station bathroom, generally they are just little holes in the floor so if you're a lady you probably have to squat <laughs> also i noticed a lot of the bathrooms did not have sinks to wash your hands and if they did have sinks to wash your hands chances are they did not have soap if they did have soap they might not have a place where you can dry your hands off so there's no like paper towel towels or air dryers so this is the reason why and I figured this, this out by like the second week, why everybody sells these cute little hand towels. And I bought a few of them because they were adorable and I bought tons of hand sanitizer. The Shinkansen costs quite a bit of money. So look at the estimated price before you buy it to make sure you have enough. Uh, because it'll range, I think buying two tickets for us was 300 bucks, so 150 each. We did decide to go in the green car, which is like the super fancy first class car, which was only like $20 more when we decided to go down to Kyoto. So for us, we were like, oh, let's do it. Let's splurge because, you know, once in a lifetime. But on the way back, we just got economy because the difference was not that big. The economy car was really nice too. I think the only difference is you can't reserve your seat in economy but I could be wrong there might be other differences oh there are smoking sections too so make sure if you are a non-smoker that you don't sit in the smoking section so once we got down to Kyoto it went straight to Kyoto station which is basically in the middle of Kyoto and uh, there were tons of taxis and tons of buses sitting like right out front so that you could take them wherever you needed to uh, I didn't have a lot of time to study the trains that go around Kyoto because there are there is a subway line that goes around there too and it's really pretty actually uh, and it's cheap too it's like super cheap but I just decided to grab a taxi to get us over to our hotel uh, luckily taxis are pretty easy to use. If you choose to ride in a taxi, you don't have to open the door. They have a little lever that will open the door for you and they will put your luggage in the trunk by themselves. You don't have to touch anything. You just slide your butt into the taxi and then you're good to go. Our taxi driver left us in the taxi all by ourselves <laughs> and he went to go look for where a restaurant is. Chotomate, <laughs> could I say. I found since I am a native English speaker, it was much easier for me to just uh, show them a map and then show them my hotel written in Japanese and they knew exactly where to go. Of course, they used their own map whenever they were driving me to the hotel, so that wasn't a problem. Hubs and I decided to stay in the Hyatt Regency Kyoto, which was also a slight splurge and that was, uh, it was maybe 15 minute 
ride in the taxi from the train station and it was probably around 20 bucks so pretty cheap and i say cheap because i do live in the san francisco bay area and everything is freaking expensive here the hyatt was absolutely gorgeous uh, my only complaint with that place was that to get to some of the hotel rooms in the Hyatt, it's a very, very long walk because it's not like a big skyscraper. It doesn't go up in stories, it sprawls out so that everybody has this really nice view of a pretty garden or you don't have to go up a whole bunch of stairs or anything like that. I think the whole place was only like three or four stories tall. So very, very small, but it was long. <laughs> but the food in the Hyatt Regency was excellent. The concierge was great. There were taxis out front like anytime I needed them but luckily I did a lot of walking around Kyoto which was great and I also got really really lucky because the Hyatt Regency was doing a couple of different events while I was there they had a Maiko which is a geisha apprentice come in or a geiko apprentice come in and do a whole performance for the people that were staying at the Hyatt which was amazing I got to try on um, real kimono which were crazy hot and seriously by the end of it I was like sweating my balls off and they held a green tea ceremony which was super cool because I've never been to a tea ceremony ceremony before so I got to see the whole uh, uh, act the whole ritual of serving the tea and drinking it and how to properly do that which I totally did it wrong but that's okay so in a nutshell my stay at the Hyatt Regency was awesome the bullet train is really really cool and totally worth trying at least once in your life even though it's kind of pricey and the Marriott was meh rooms were teeny tiny that's to be expected in Tokyo uh, and the food was also kind of meh at the Marriott that was the only time I had a meh meal. The rest of the time I was in to Tokyo and Kyoto, everything was delicious. I think that about encompasses everything as far as arriving in Tokyo and then getting down to Kyoto and how we did that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little pro tip experience and a few of the pictures that I could share at the time and a few of my little squirrely videos because I was super excited about arriving in Tokyo. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them below. I will check those out as soon as I post this video. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified next time I do a video. I think the next one will probably be like my favorite places in Kyoto that I got to experience because there were a lot of them and it was incredible. I loved Kyoto. I can't wait to go back. So I think that's everything for my review of the Shinkansen and a couple of the hotels that I got to stay at in Japan. Uh, again, if you have questions, leave them below. I'm really happy to answer those. And I love it when I'm able to chat back and forth with people that watch my videos. Thank you so much for entertaining me this whole, like, however many minutes this video was. And I will see you next time. Bye! so many things I could do right now. I'm near Tokyo Eki, the Tokyo train station, and it seriously reminds me of the San Francisco financial district around here.